This is the code in action video for chapter 13. In chapter 13, we use MobX in combination with React Hooks. We started out by migrating our existing to-do application to MobX the traditional way, and then moved on to implementing MobX in combination with React Hooks. In the first code example of chapter 13, we first defined the to-do store using MobX. So we imported observable action computed decorators from MobX and the decorate function to decorate our class with. As we can see, we simply use decorate on the to-do store class and then we define the various observables, computed values and actions. So first of all, we have to, in our class, we have to define a state which consists of the to-do's array and the filter string. We then define a computed value, which is the filter to use, and here we simply do the filtering just like we did before. Then we define a fetch action which fetches new to do's and then simply sets the state to the fetch to do's. As we can see, MobX takes a much more imperative way where you can directly set the state, directly modify the state in the class, and MobX will automatically see where observables need the state and then re-render those that that matter for this state change. Next we define the add to do action which simply pushes a new item to the array. The toggle to do which finds a certain to do item by ID and then toggles its completed status and the remove to do which finds a to-do item by ID and then uses splice to remove it from the array directly. And finally, the filter to use action, which sets the filter value to a new name. And as we can see, we decorate the to-dos as observables. So this means that these values will be observed by MobX. Then we define the filter to use as a computed value and fetch and so on the, as actions, which means that those are functions to change the state. In our components, we then use the inject function from MobX React to inject the to-do store into our component. So as we can see here, we can then use the to-do store to access various actions from the store. So for example, we can use to-do store.addToDo to insert a new to-do item. If you want to use any state from the store, we need to use the observer tag from MobX React so that MobX knows that this component observes, this observes a certain part of the state and it will re-render the component when the corresponding ch state changes. So in this case, we use the to-do store filter to use computed value and the observer tag and check the store. And then whenever the filter Whenever the filter changes or the to-do items change, it will re-render this component. In the first code example, we connected MobX to React the traditional way by using the inject and observer higher order components. As we can see, our application still works the same way as before, but we are now using MobX to handle the state. So we can add new to-dos, check them, and filter. In the second code example of chapter 13, we used hooks in combination with MobX. So first of all, we define our own hooks to access the store. Here we use the context hook and the MobX provider context from MobX React to create our own use stores hook, which simply uses the MobX provider context. And then we define our own use to do store hook, which gets the to do store from the provider context, which contains all stores that MobX provides. If we take a look at the index file, we can see that here we are using the provider to provide the to do store. This is basically just a context provider. And we create this to do store from our class and then pass it on there. And then we can use the to do store from the context. This is how we defined this hook here. Now we can use this hook in our components. So for example, in add to do, we're now using the use to do store hook from our custom hooks. And then we can get the to do store from this hook. And we can use it the same way as before. There's no need to use an inject function now. We can simply use the hook and access actions from it. 
to access state, we still have to define the component as observable somehow. So we can use the use observer hook from WebX React, and then we wrap the part of the state, the part of the component that uses the state with use observe with the use observer hook. So in this case, we we wrap the render function with use observer because the render rendering part uses the observable filtered to do state. This makes sure that when the filter to do's change, so when the to do's change or the filter changes, the list gets re rendered. We can also take a look at the to do item, and here we use the use observer to also wrap the actions because the item ID might change. So we need to make sure that this is observable as well and gets recomputed when the values change. In the second code example, we have upgraded our MobX application to hooks. So we are now using the store hooks that we have defined and the use observer hook from MobX React to connect our application to the MobX store. And it still works the same way as always. The third code example from chapter 13 we implemented the use local store hook from MobX. So we can take a look at the add to do component here. And now we're using a local store here, which means that we can define a MobX store also within a component. Here, the values will automatically get decorated by normal values will be observer, observables, get functions will be computed values and normal functions will be decorated as actions. So here we use the use local store hook to create an input store to deal with the input field from the add to do component. So we have a value of the input field. We can check if the button is disabled, if there is no value, and we can update from input or just update the value directly. From input, we use e.target.value, which is useful for dealing with input fields. And then we can use the input store just like any other MobX store. We can dispatch, we can call action functions from it, and we can use the values and computed values as well. In the third code example, we have used the use local store hook to create the local MobX store for our add to do component. So we are now handling the input field state and the state of the button using a MobX store. So this is a local MobX store. We can see the button is disabled now. Once we enter something, the button gets enabled using a computed disabled value from the MobX store. And everything still works the same way. 